Hey everybody, video here for you today. Now I don't make a lot of videos on 20th century history, but I do have a playlist and occasionally I do talk on it. But I have some uh, videos I'm working on as far as ancient history. But lately, every time I think about what video I'm going to make next, this always pops into my mind. So today we're going to talk about it. Now a lot of us, of course, have heard of Fukushima and Chernobyl. And even today, the memory of Chernobyl is just kind of fading away with the whole new generation coming up. But I did remember that I made a video on Chernobyl about four years ago, so maybe this is a good one to talk about. I've made a video on this kind of a thing before. Probably talked about Fukushima at least once before, but this is a nuclear disaster that you may have not heard about. I have read a lot of the story in the last week or so, and seems to be some conflicting evidence um today there are areas that don't seem to be too contaminated but there is a whole area that has been really wiped from maps and today is still highly contaminated and these areas appear to be right next to each other and there's a couple of the most polluted lakes i've ever seen in my life i think so let's talk about this we are going down to Kishtam today this is Kishtam today, and the reason why this is called the Kishtam disaster is because this is the nearest city that exists today. This disaster happened right here, cities nearby, and in a dead area here, wiped from the map in memory. Here is the site of a plutonium factory today, and the remains of one that exploded a long time ago. And you notice here, there has been a lot of stuff that has just been taken away from here. Now, just a little history on this place. Here is a pic from the 40s when they were building this facility originally. Prison labor here, but steel reinforced walls with a meter thick concrete inner core here. They thought it would withstand anything. But on the night of the 29th of September 1957, this place blew with the force of 70 to 100 tons of TNT. This is the third worst nuclear disaster behind Fukushima and Chernobyl. But it says in 1957, the cooling system of one of the tanks contained about 70 to 80 tons of liquid radioactive waste failed and was not repaired. The temperature in it started to rise, resulting in evaporation and a chemical explosion. Now, this disaster kind of came at the beginning of the nuclear power industry, and it was covered up by the Soviets. And no matter when the Americans found out about it, they didn't want to talk about it because it would maybe expose the dangers of nuclear power and affected some of their own projects. But the cover-up, it says the disaster was covered up in the Soviet media, which reported that the strange lights in the night sky, which was actually a glow caused from ionization from radioactive waste, they said it was a rare event related to the aurora. The locals knew something was wrong, of course, due to the evacuation of two dozen nearby villages and the large-scale decontamination work that was to be carried out over the next several years. But there are some today who think this was a nuclear atomic test gone wrong, and there are still some kind of hazy stories about this. So I know I have some smart subs. Maybe some of them know about this story already, but I would appreciate your comments. Uh, here is a map of the fallout from this accident. Down here in the bottom left is where it happened. And this is the plume that went out. It went over a large, large area. And it says 800 to 22,000 square kilometers is the total area where the fallout covered, depending on which element you consider significant. It says the explosion, 70 to 100 tons of TNT and equivalent, threw a 160-ton concrete lid into the here, air. This is where this all took place. We have all heard of nuclear cooling facilities. Well, what they did here, they used this lake here, this open water lake, as a cooling facility for their nuclear waste. And just take a look at that lake. Would you go swimming in there? I'm going to be working on some ancient history videos, so I want my subscribers to see what they can find out about this place because I'm just not going to look into it anymore. I've read enough, really. 
but here they seem to have some discharge facility here that separates cleaner water from this part of the lake and man i've seen some lakes and just to know the history of this place that is pretty disturbing and then what they did is they built canals down to this lake and this was a lake a while ago and this is where they put their nuclear waste right in here there are certain parts of the story that are confusing originally they use this lake but it still looks like it's being used for something today i would appreciate any comments but this lake let's just read about lake karachi today now here's the link i will leave below the story is a little more than two years old but it says there's a place in russia more dangerous than chernobyl it says lake karachi or karache is a place you will never want to visit it says Lake Karachay is the most polluted place on Earth. Now sealed off, it was one stumping ground for nuclear waste, but is it safe today? Sadly, Lake Karachay is hardly a perfect place for relax or sunbathing. During the 1990s, if a person stood on a shore for more than an hour, they would be exposed to a dose of radiation, meaning certain death. From 1951, the nearby Mayek Production Association, one of the biggest nuclear facilities in the Soviet Union, dumped radioactive waste in Karachay and was renamed the V9 Water Reservoir. A drought in the 1960s dried out some parts of the lake, exposing cesium-137 and strontium-90 to the sun in 1967. A strong wind swept over the area, blowing dangerous dust over a territory of some 2,700 square kilometers, putting thousands of lives at risk. And I believe they had a problem here back just a couple of years ago. It says, this forced the authorities to act, and the decision was finally taken to seal off Karache with a sarcophagus. Rocky aggregate and big blocks of concrete were used to cover up the lake. For years, radioactive waste was released into Karachay's waters. The lake covers less than a square mile, and the sediment on the bottom is sought to be composed entirely of high-level radioactive waste deposits about 3.4 meters deep. But researchers say that with all this nuclear waste here, it's just safer to leave it where it is and try to cover it up than move it and put it somewhere else. Now when this blast happened and the fallout fell over this area, it created zones that are not allowed to be occupied today. In fact, there's signs up in some of these areas. This is an unsafe zone and don't even stop and get out of your car. Some of these dead zones are very near where people live today. But I heard in one documentary that the Russians give these people a little bit of money so they can be studied as far as the effects on radiation on people. And the people don't even want to leave or some of them can't leave because they need that money to live. Here is one area. City existed 70 years ago and it was just wiped from the map. Faint traces of roads and other things here. And probably other areas where a city once existed, but all the buildings and homes removed and covered up. Here, faint ghostly images of a city that once was. Here on this website, they talk about the aftermath. And they talk about the area that is called the East Urals Radioactive Trace. And that's an area that is highly contaminated. There are some signs up. It says this delineated an area of approximately 1,000 square kilometers that became known as the East Urals Radioactive Trace, or ERT. A map of this region is displayed in Figure 2. At the time of the accident, 63% of the area was used for agricultural purposes, 20% was forested, and 23 rural communities existed in the area. These populations were evacuated, amounting to some 10,700 people over a total of a 22 month period after the accident. Some people were removed the following week. It took a week to get this started and some people weren't removed from the area for two years. Once again, appreciate any comments that you have on this site or find out about this if you wanna research this 
I'm moving on to ancient history. This story is starting to make my stomach turn. The things I have read, the Tekka River, the pollution and that. The stories from these people, how much of this today is getting covered up. Horrifying stories about birth defects and I'll just leave it at that. Here is what they call the Kishtam Memorial Stone. But here is a list of the villages, the populations, and then the time it took to evacuate here. The first cities in the first few weeks, and then all these other cities. It took months and months and years. But that's my video. I'd really appreciate your comments, what you know on this story. A lot of it is confusing to me, the levels of radioactivity in this dead area and then in these towns nearby. Sometimes, well, we're pretty disgusting creatures. How we treat the earth, how we treat people is an excuse saying, well, this all happened a long time ago. Well, when the heck are we going to grow up? Hope you thought this was interesting. You all have a very nice day.